This is problem 4-55. It's on page 145. Uh, determine the moment of the force F about an axis extending between A and C. Express the result as a Cartesian vector. Well, let me sketch the relevant geometry. I'm going to leave off the pipe system that was drawn in the problem statement. You can look at it and see it. Um, generally, the pipe comes out, and it doesn't really matter how the pipe lies. The, the fact that the pipe initially runs along the x-axis does not really matter. What matters is that it runs out four feet, and then along the y-axis, it comes out three feet, and then down by two feet. What really matters is the relationship between this point where the force is applied and this point. Because see, what we're really interested in is the moment of the force down here, which by the way, that force they gave us as a vector for i plus 12j minus 3k, and these are all in pounds force. They gave us um, this force applied at this point. It doesn't matter if you move out here and then here or here then here. It doesn't matter. What matters is we're interested in the moment of this force about, let me draw the line that we're interested in. As a matter of fact, let me do it this way. We're interested in the moment of that force about this line. Maybe I should have put the force in green. So that's what we want, the moment of this force about that line. Now, probably the easiest way to do this, first of all, is to start with a vector. Now, why would I start with a vector? Well, I can calculate the moment by taking a moment arm and crossing it with the force vector F. And so what I'm going to do is, since this is point B down here, there's also a vector that moves from A to B. Now, remember, when you're taking a moment like this, you need to go from a point on the line about which you want the moment to a point on the line of action of the force. The only point I know for sure, without a lot of work, that F has is, is right there, right? I don't know any other point of force F or any other point on the line that goes along force F. I mean, if I drew it in SOLIDWORKS, then I would, but Otherwise, I'd have to you know, use this information to move to some other point. Why bother? I'm going to make a vector from point A to point B. Now, I don't have to. I could actually make a vector from point C to point B, and that might have actually been easier. In fact, you might want to try that. Because it doesn't matter what point on the line I go from or what point on the force line I go to. This one's convenient. I will get the same answer ultimately, which is what's the moment of that force about that line. I just chose to go from A to B, I guess because that's just what made sense to me at the time. So I decided to write the vector R A B down. I guess it was the most obvious because we've got all these dimensions, four foot, three foot, two foot. And in fact, we've got a positive for I We've got a positive 3j. You shouldn't put commas between these. You should add them together because that's what you're doing. Moving from A to B, we have to move here plus this moment, or plus plus this movement, and then plus this movement. But this movement, this two foot movement, is a negative movement. You see, what we're doing is moving from A to B. You got to be careful. You don't want the vector from B to A, you want it from A to B. Now, these all have units of feet. And then of course F was given, so now all I really have to do is compute the cross product, and that will give me the total moment of uh, the force about R. Okay. So writing it out, we'll write R first for I plus 3J minus 2K crossed with the force for I Let's be careful here. These are all feet so far. So then crossed with the force F for I plus 12J 
minus 3k, which are all pounds force. And so the units we expect to get are simply foot pounds force, right? Foot pounds force. Now to calculate the uh, cross product, uh, you can foil it and consider, you know, I cross I, I cross J, I cross K, but it's a little bit more, I don't know, it's a little more compact to think about it as the determinant of a matrix, not like the movie The Matrix, where you put I, J, and K in the first row, and then the components of each vector in the second and third row respectively. So 4, 3, negative 2, just picking off the components, and then 4, 12, negative 3, picking off the components of the force. And then calculate the determinant of this matrix. Now, the, the mem this is more a memory trick than anything. It's just quicker than, you know, foiling everything. And you got to remember that I cross I is 0. you got to remember that I cross J is positive, but J cross I is negative. It's just easier to write down the determinant. So you, in calculating the I component, block out in your mind the column and row that I are in, and then multiply 3 times negative 3 minus negative 12 times, right? I'm sorry, negative 2 times 12. Uh, like this, <clears throat> 3 times negative 3 minus negative 2 times 12. And that is the I component. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now I usually run out of room, but I think I've got enough space this time, so let me continue with the J component. So cross off the column and row for J. You'll know, have 4 times negative 3 minus negative 2 times 4. Or minus 4 times negative 2. But don't forget, you have to attach a negative sign for this center term. So let's see. 4 times negative 3 minus uh, 4 times negative 2. And that's the J component. And it looks like I may run out of space because I didn't write small enough. No, yeah, that's okay. We'll just go to the next line. So this is still in the equals, plus last component, it'll be the K component. Block out the K column, K row, and what we have is 4 12s minus 4 threes. And that's the K component. Now the units are all foot-pounds force. Simplifying this down, just doing the math, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Uh, plus 24. I'll spare you the details. You've been probably working math problems since you were quite young. So this comes out to 15. This term comes out to plus 4. How? Because this came out negative. 4 times negative 3. Well, I said I'd spare you. Anyway, it comes out positive overall. 4j. And then this term comes out to plus 36k. And these are all foot pounds. This is the total moment of this force about the line AB. But that's not what we want. We want the moment of the force about AC. So what we're going to need is a unit vector from A to C. So we go from A to C, then that'd be 4i plus 3j. And these are feet. Divided by, notice it's not a unit vector yet because it has a magnitude in fact, its magnitude would be 5, right? So I need to divide by the magnitude of the vector, 4 squared plus 3 squared, which is, of course, 5. And so this comes out to 4 fifths i plus 3 fifths j. And now all you need to do to calculate the magnitude of the moment along line AC is to simply take the dot product of the moment with the unit vector. So if I want the magnitude of the moment about line AC, I need to take the moment that I computed and take the dot product with the unit vector along the line where I want the uh, moment. So let's see, the dot product. What do you do with the dot product? Well, you take each of the terms like uh, I and I, and you multiply them together. And then you add. So 15 times 4 fifths plus the y component, 4 times 3 fifths, plus, well, let's see, 36 times 0. 
Okay, so after a little bit of simplification, just this is just math again. This comes out to 14.4, and it's still foot pounds. So this is the moment, or the magnitude of the moment of the force F about line AC. Now, if we want to write that as a vector, we want to know what direction this lies in, all we have to do is multiply that magnitude by line AC. So, MAC times, this is not a dot product, it's just multiplication, U, AC. So we need to take the magnitude, 14.4 foot pounds force, and multiply it by the unit vector, which we already used before, but we can use it again. 4 fifths I plus 3 fifths J. And so this comes out to about, I think I had to round this off, 11.52I plus 8.64J. And of course, it still has the same units of foot pounds force. That's feet times pounds force. Now you might look at this and say, well, wait a second, that doesn't make sense. I mean, after all, a moment has to be around this line. How can you write that the moment lies along the line? Because that's what this says, right? This just says that this moment lies along the line AC. Remember I told you about double-headed arrows and pointing your right thumb in the direction of the moment. So the, the moment, if we can write this as moment about AC as a vector, that vector is, let's choose another color, it's right here. Let's see, it's got a positive I, positive J component. It's right there. Uh, despite my drawing, it's above point B. It's a moment about and that makes sense. Look, look it up. Generally, it's going to cause a moment about AC that is, well, counterclockwise from our view. It has components in the x and the y direction. Right? We could even break up this vector into a twist along the y direction and a twist along the x direction. Okay? And, of course, both of those would be positive components because here they are. In fact, the magnitude of this one would be right there, 11.52, the magnitude of this one, right there. Okay. There's more twist in, along the x direction than there is along the y, and of course to, to figure out what we mean by twist, you've got to point your thumb in the direction of these double-headed vectors, you know, right hand, and uh, that'll help you understand a little better, at least hopefully intuitively, uh, what's going on here.